Welcome to the explainer video for the multiplexing board from eLearnTronics. Now if you have your board, you should have already put it together. If you haven't yet, go ahead and check out the soldering video and get the board all put together. Now the cool thing with the multiplexer board is if you have something like an Arduino or Raspberry Pi, you can actually use it to drive your board. And here, my name is Paul, so I actually made a little P out of there. Uh, I do plan to release a code sample at some point so that you can do this yourself. Uh, right now, just you'll need to understand uh, the basics of how to use the headers and how to properly plug them into your board. I'll go over that a little bit. And at some point in the future, there will be code samples at the very least for the Arduino. So I'm going to disconnect this now. Set that aside. And if you have your board, you'll notice that if you push the various buttons, the corresponding LED will light up. And if you push two buttons on one side, then both corresponding LEDs. You can also get four LEDs to light up and potentially even nine. And if you're really good, uh, 16. Okay. Huh. It's kind of kind of difficult, uh, and you might scrape up your fingers on the underside like I just did, but that's okay. So we want to understand what the heck is going on here, and why does this matter? Well, first let's understand a little bit about how LEDs are driven. We have a circuit with an LED, and Every LED is gonna have a resistor. I'm not gonna draw this as I do these schematics because it'll just get messy, but just assume anytime I draw the LED, it's got the resistor on there. Okay, so we can have a simple positive to negative and we turn on the LED. What if we have two LEDs? Well, uh, we can put a couple of switches in there. So we have our positive voltage, and it drives these two switches. And now whichever button we press, and these both go to uh, ground, now whichever button we press, that LED will turn on. Well, that's okay, but it starts to get really unwieldy. In this setup, we would need 16 individual buttons controlling each individual LED. Now, we're using buttons here, but with a microcontroller or any sort of chip, that means you need 16 different inputs. That gets to be a bit much. Much less when you get to hundreds or thousands of LEDs uh, or individually addressable components, it's almost impossible to get that many inputs. So we can use a concept called multiplexing. Multiplexing is uh, pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is take several LEDs and we're going to tie, uh, I'll, I'll draw a three by three grid in this case. We're going to tie together their uh, anodes and then also some of their cathodes. So we'll draw out all of our LEDs. Uh, this is going to start to get a little sloppy because it's a lot to draw. Okay. Now we're going to tie together, we will have our positive voltage source and we're gonna have three switches and that's going to control the row. So we'll have the power coming here and then coming here and here to this third LED. Likewise on our second row and our third row. 
Okay, so the problem here is if we just tie each of these to ground, then anytime we turn on the switch, all three LEDs would light up. Well, we don't want that. We want to be able to light up just this LED or just this LED. This can also work for other concepts. Uh, if you look at your phone screen uh, and it's figuring out where you're touching, that uses a similar concept here. So it can be used for reading inputs as well, but we're using LEDs because it makes a much better demonstration. So the way we control this, we're going to use three buttons on this uh, downside, and then these will all tie to the same ground. And so we tied the row anodes together, so we'll tie the column cathodes together. And then here. And here. And then, and this, I know this is getting completely unwieldy and almost impossible to read, uh, especially because this is not computer generated. So you get to deal with my sloppiness at the same time. But stick with me. Now we're going to use an example here where uh, we want to light up this LED. We'll call this LED number seven. Huh. All right, well, we're not going to use the red marker. Don't throw things. Okay, we want LED number seven. So what we're gonna do is complete this circuit. So now we have positive current, right? We're, we're connected. We've got positive flowing to this LED, but also to this LED, and also to this LED. But when we complete this and hit this button, then this circuit is completed. But this circuit still is open, and this circuit still is open. Now the reason when we press two buttons, we get two LEDs lit up, is because if we press both of these buttons, well, this LED and this LED are both tied to the same ground, so it's going to complete both of those circuits. Okay, now this is an important concept. Uh, if you want cleaner diagrams, there are cleaner diagrams out there. So you get the idea of what's happening when we multiplex. Now, if you're keen, you may have noticed that for nine different LEDs, we needed six input output. That's not that good of, a, of an improvement, right? And in fact, if we wanted to drive four LEDs, how many uh, input output would we need? One, two, three, four. There's actually no real improvement there. But the number of rows and columns uh, will increase by two each time you add a factor, but the number of total components will increase by a squared value. So, um, and I'll just write this out, you can check out the math, but for a two by two, that's going to give you four, we'll, we'll call this four LEDs, but it could be four, four inputs, four reads, four buttons, four, four of any such thing that you're multiplexing, uh, and your IO is going to be four. A three by three is going to be equal, you can get nine LEDs for six IO. A four by four, which is what we have on our multiplexer board, will give you 16 LEDs for just eight IO. Well, now we're less than half. That's pretty good. Five by five, well, that's going to give you 25 LEDs for only 10 input output. And you'll see this scales very quickly because the number of IO that we need is the sum of these two numbers of our grid. But the number of LEDs we get is the product. So the number of LEDs that we'll get to control will go up much faster because we're multiplying compared with our IO, which essentially in this case just goes up by two every time. Um, and it doesn't have to be a square, right? You can have a four by five grid, 
right? That would give you 20 LEDs for nine IO. But where this gets really great is let's go up to say 100 by 100. That's gonna give us 10,000 LEDs. Now we'll need 200 IO to control that. That's still a lot of IO. That's still a lot of buttons, if you will. Or with the processor, we call it IO, input, output. But you can control 10,000 individual points, okay? When we get to 1,000 by 1,000, that's, and I'm, I'm, that's, I think 10 million, right? Nope, that would be a million. You know, we get dependent on calculators and we start to do stupid things like that. That's a million LEDs, which is an unfathomably large number, really. You can't picture a million. And all we need to control that is 2,000 IO. Okay, that is 500 times. For every new IO that we've got here, we've got 500 different individual points that we can control. And the number can go up from there. So you see how this is a very powerful concept. But to go back to the beginning of the video, I was showing a very static image of a P on that board, okay? But the way that was working is I had 16 LEDs Okay, now with the Arduino, I certainly could just light all of them up, right? I could turn all of their grounds low and then just light up the very specific uh, LEDs that I wanted. But if I set this, so to make the P, I need all of these. <laughs> okay, I need to light all of these up. Well, if I turn on this, ground and this ground and this ground and then this positive and this positive and this positive and this positive. Well, these two or three LEDs would have also laid up. So I don't want that. Well, the way the code actually works is it lights this LED up for one millisecond, one millisecond. Then it lights this one up for one millisecond, then this one, then this one, skips this guy, goes to this one, and it lights each of these up for one millisecond at a time. To go through all of that, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine milliseconds before it starts over. This is taking advantage of our eyeballs being kind of dumb because we can't perceive that. So to us, it just looks like it's on. But when you get down to it, it's none of these is on simultaneously. So we're taking advantage of the ability for computers to go way faster, for electronics to go way faster than the human eye can, than the human brain can. And if you ever look at like a giant display board, then it's actually made up basically out of this. Every pixel can be individually controlled and it has a refresh rate that it's going through in refreshing the pixels. And it's thousands of times per second, potentially. Um, no, not really. It's like 24 times a second, 24 hertz. Uh, but it's essentially going to be little panels like this that are a lot more dense. And then they all get fitted together. And they're all individually driven, but all controlled by a central system. And, and, and But this is the basic concept that's driving a, most displays that you're working with. I say most, it's probably just some. I'm sure there's plenty of other driver technology, but this is the core concept. When your computer is, or your phone is figuring out where your finger is, it's doing the same thing. It's checking all of these different zones on there. And when it gets a hit, it knows, okay, I'm touching right here. I'd show you on my phone, but I'm recording this on my phone. I'm touching right here because it's cycling through. It's checking, is there a touch here? Nope, is there a touch here? Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Yes. Yes. Okay. They're touching right here. And then I might start over. Touch, 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 touch. 
oh, now they're touching here, so they're sliding their finger, okay? But it's able to do this so quickly that the human brain can't perceive that it's not all happening at once. So the end result is, to us, it's an instantaneous result. It's a pretty cool concept. It's a lot of fun to play around with once you get the code up and running on your Arduino. I highly recommend that you take a stab at writing some code. I can tell you, a one millisecond refresh time, or one millisecond flash rate, it'll appear completely stable, completely steady. If you go to 10 milliseconds, you'll actually start to see the flicker. Go to 20 milliseconds, and you'll actually see each LED, and it'll go boom, 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 boom. Right, it'll be very quick, but you'll still be able to perceive it. So play around with the different speeds, and I bet you can do some pretty fun stuff. Now, just to make sure that you know how to use your board, when you're plugging this into your Arduino, on this side are going to be your positive inputs, and they'll correspond to each button. So the, this top uh, input on the header corresponds to this button. And then on the bottom, this is your ground. This is where you're going to sync the current. Uh, or if you're using something like an Arduino, this is where it'll do like a digital write low. And each of these obviously corresponds to each of these LEDs. So if you run positive voltage here and low voltage here, you'll get this LED to light up. It's a lot of fun. Um, I will caution you to be careful not to plug in the nine volt battery while you have a microcontroller uh, plugged into this. It's probably going to be okay, but you never know. You don't want to overload. Some microcontrollers are a little bit more sensitive to high voltage spikes. Uh, that could potentially come through from the 9-volt battery, so just make sure that you only have one or the other plugged in. Uh, if you do something cool, I highly uh, recommend or at least request that you let me know about it. Send me a video. Send me a photo. My email is tron at elearntronics.com. If you have questions, send them my way. I can't guarantee that I know the answer, but I can guarantee that I'll try to find it for you. Again, tron at elearntronics.com. I'd love to see what you come up with. If you have any questions, hit me up. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.